Hello and welcome, welcome back everybody to our next mystery surprise bag painting. This week is fur themed. So this painting is all about texture. It's all about patterns. It's all about awesome bright colors. So let's get started. For your supplies today, as always, we have our paper. Let's put that underneath our painting so that we don't get anything else painty. We also have our little palette of paint. You can take off the rubber band. And this little top plate is going to be the plate we're going to mix our colors on. Over here, we have our little containers of paint. You can scoop out some paint, put it on your mixing plate so you can keep some for later. I have scooped out some paint and put it on my mixing plate and these are all the color mixes that I'm going to do. So my first color decision is always going to be background. I'm going to do that with a light pink so I put a little bit of white and pink on my plate over here. Um, and here's going to be some other color mixes we're going to do in just a little bit, but we'll get to those guys. We also have some brushes. This is going to be my largest brush. This kind of bigger round brush, that one's my medium brush. And then I have this little white one for all my little details. We also have a couple of Sharpies included this week, and these are going to be really handy for all of our little pattern makings that we're going to do. It's almost sentangly. I have a silver one in there also, just in case you have maybe some darker colors that you want to add. The silver Sharpie shows up really cool on top of that part. And as always, because we must glitter! So I put a little bit of gold glitter in here for today. I was thinking maybe for the sun, or maybe a little sparkle in the eye, or maybe a little, little pattern details, little dots, little lines in our bird. And lastly, we also have our little um, cup and our paper towel, so you can wash off brushes and dry off brushes. Okay guys, so, as always, we're going to start with our biggest brush and our biggest space, which is usually going to be the background there. Um, I'm going to mix up a really light pink. I was thinking light pink because I have my sunset kind of setting over here. You could definitely do a purple, a light purple, a light blue would be really pretty. Or if you want to make this a moon instead of a sun, like a little nighttime bird, maybe a little dark blue up in that sky. Think about it. I'm going to follow along this example up here, and I'm going to mix together some white and some pink. I'm going to do little mixes, little mixes, a little bit of pink at a time into all that white paint until I get a color that, that I like. And I'm going to fill in all of my background.
Okay, so I have all of my background filled in with this really pretty light pink. As always, don't forget to paint your side edges. So I'm going to wrap it around, get all those little side edges to match. I'll get all the top edge. And then if you want to leave a little spot open for where the sun is, we can wrap that color around later, or even where that little plant is. We can leave a little spot open, maybe for that little plant color. So once you get all your side edges, all your background filled in, we're going to go back while our background is still kind of wet paint. And we're going to give that really pretty kind of sunsetty cloud texture. We're going to keep using our um, biggest brush. Didn't even need to wash it off. I'm going to go over here to my awesome hot pink over here. Just by itself. Just a little bit on your brush. You can always add more. And I'm going to hold my brush kind of flat along its widest part. And I'm going to press and drag. I'm making kind of short, choppy squares or rectangle shapes, kind of sweeping to the side each time, getting a little bit more paint as I go. I want the top of my sky to be a little darker. A little bit more color than the bottom of my sky. Once you have a good amount of the, the dark pink or that uh, pink just by itself, I'm going to go in with a little bit of white. Again, didn't even wash off my, my brush there. I'm just going to grab some white paint just by itself. And then I'm going to add some little white marks in there also. It's going to kind of help blend those pink marks together, kind of soften them a little bit. The trick is to not blend them in too much. I want to see both colors. I want to see bright pinks and I want to see bright whites also. So these are kind of like my little abstracty clouds. My abstracty cloud texture in my sky. We can take it all the way down. If at any point it's getting a little bit scratchy or you kind of want to soften any one of these marks, either the white or the pink, you can always go back to that light pink and kind of fade out a little spot if you need it. It'll kind of blend it back into your background. So after you have all of your background filled in, we're going to wash off our big brush and our water cup. We're going to dry it off really, really well. And here's kind of the fun part. We're going to fill in our kind of base colors of our bird. And we're doing this next just so it has the most time to dry so we can put all those really cool designs on top. Um, I'm gonna kind of follow my colors on this side, um, but you can do these any different colors that you want. So have fun, add on those colors, customize how you like. So I'm gonna start with the little head over here. Um, I'm going to use just blue by itself. I still have my um, largest brush. But if this one feels a little too big for any of these spaces, you can definitely switch to one of your smaller brushes.
while I have this color on my brush, I'm also going to pick and choose a couple spots where I want maybe a little bit more of this color. So I'm going to maybe do this little stripe, and I'll do that last little stripe also. But don't have to put these colors these places exactly. It's up to you. So I'm going to wash off my brush and dry off my brush. And I'm going to fill in my next color. So I'm going to do a light blue. Uh, over here I'm going to kind of borrow a little white. I'm going to put that next to my blue over here. Grab a little blue and I'm going to mix it together. I want a really light blue. It's a very happy color. And then I'm going to put this color a couple places. So I might do this little stripe. I'm also going to kind of play with my blues and my purples since I have a lot of warm colors in my background for kind of my sunset. I'm going to put a lot of cool colors, a lot of blues, a lot of purples into my bird just for a little contrast. Um, so I really like my light blue, but I'm going to make it a little bit purplier. I'm going to grab a little bit of purple, mix it into that light blue. It's going to make this really pretty kind of periwinkle color. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Ooh, that's nice. So I like this color. I'm going to add it a couple more places. I don't know if you can see on the picture there, but I really like when colors kind of combine and are a little bit more two-toned. I'll kind of, you can do that a little bit intentionally. So if you have like a light color, maybe you want just a little bit more blueiness to it or purpliness to it. You can just kind of sweep it into that color and that gives you a nice little shifts in color kind of gives a little fade kind of bluier to purplier so those can be fun kind of play with your colors I'm gonna add some darker colors next so I'm going to add on a little bit of purple just by itself I still have my big brush but if you want to use that smaller brush maybe that medium round one that might be a good one too so I'm going to fill in a couple more little stripes. And for this little piece, I'm going to make that a darker color also. I'm going to mix a little blue and a little purple, that's gonna make this really pretty kind of electric bluey purple color. I love that combination. And we're gonna fill in the rest of the wing. But again, any different colors you wanna to add to this. The pink and the purple mixed together is also a really pretty color. The That bright pink and the blue gives you a really cool purpley color. So I washed off my brush and dried off my brush. I still have my big brush. I'm going to let all of my bird colors dry for a while. And I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to fill in my sun. So my sun is this awesome bright neon orange just by itself. This one's kind of a like a neon red orange, but I'm going to use that lighter of the two. I'm going to go around my leaves, smooth out my paint. You can definitely also add a little white to this if you want it a little, a little soft, 
I'm gonna let that little sun dry for a little while and then my next little step I'm going to fill in my plants now since that's kind of a smaller area and kind of rounder little shapes I'm gonna switch to my medium brush and um, we're gonna fill in our plants with that one. so for this one I mixed up a little bit of a light green so on my mixing plate, I'm going to scoot a little white over to my awesome bright neon green. And I'm going to mix the white and the green together. You can definitely do that bright green just by itself if you like. I really like this light, super light green that happens. So I'm going to fill in all of my leaves. If this brush is still feeling a little big, you can definitely use that smallest brush that you have there. No problem. So once you have that plant all the way filled in, we're going to fill in our other plant here. So I'm going to use my um, medium brush again. So I did wash it off. I dried it off. And I'm going to mix mostly green with a little bit of that blue. And it's going to make this really pretty, just a little bit of blue. A little goes a long way. It's going to kind of take over the green pretty quick. So just a little bit at a time. It's going to give you this really pretty, kind of darker, almost tealy green color. But it still kind of has that nice little bit of neon in it. I'm going to twirl my brush, twirl and drag to get it nice and pointy again. And we're going to fill in our leaves on this side. I need a little bit more blue on my end. So I'm going to let those leaves dry for a little while. Um, we'll come back and put some really cool little designs on them. Um, some little sweeps, some highlights, some shadows. Um, but we're going to go back over here to our little birdie face. And let's fill in our beak and our eye. I'm going to do the eye first. And I have switched to my super small brush. So this one I really like. It has a nice firm bristle to it, so it's really nice to make uh, smaller little details with. I'm going to make my outside the eye orange, kind of like a yellowy orange. You can definitely do a different color. I'm not filling in that center circle yet. I'll fill that in with black, but I'll let this color dry for a little bit. So that's kind of a quick little step right there. I'm going to wash off my brush, dry off my brush. And I'm going to fill in my beak. So the top of my beak, I'm going to fill in with a darker color, say purple, just by itself. And then the bottom of the beak, I'm going to fill in with a lighter version of that color. So I'm going to do a little bit of a light purple on the bottom.
while I'm over here um, adding some more little details to my bird, I'm going to wash off my brush, that same little um, small brush. I'm going to wash it off, I'm going to dry it off, and I'm going to put a couple little white details to start. So I'm going to go into a little bit of white, and on top of the head, I'm going to make this little design. So these are going to be, I'm using kind of the, the thin part of the brush instead of flat parts. I'm turning it using that thin part and I'm doing little choop, 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 little lines, like little dashes, real short. I'm following the curve of the head. Get a little bit of paint at a time. I'm going to make it a little bit more kind of where the neck is, I guess, at the bottom of the head, and then a little less on the top of the head. You can definitely do a different color if you want. You can mix a color with white. I'm also going to make some um, lines with the white. so. I'm going to find all the places where I put this darker blue because the white's going to show up nice and bright against it. And I'm just going to put some little lines going up and down. All the way across in that little part and then at the bottom too. I'm not pressing on my brush very hard at all, keeping it real light. I'm also going to add a few little dashes over here. And if you notice over here, I have kind of rows. I have three rows of lines. You can definitely go all the way through, but I really like how that looks. I feel like it looks more um, feathery, maybe. So I'm gonna shoop, shoop, shoop. And then I'm gonna skip a little space. Skip a little space. My last little detail I'm going to do with the white, while I have um, the white on this brush, I'm going to do those little dots. So I'm going to flip my brush around, use the back handle, and dip into a little bit of white. And I'm going to do some little dots. And you can do dots on the blue, dots on the dark purple. On my example, I have some lines over here, but maybe I'll do dots instead. I'm going to keep adding some more patterns and so my next stop is my sun. I'm going to give it kind of those little rays around it, this kind of little pattern rays. I'm going to keep using my smallest brush so I did wash it off and I dried it off really well. And I'm going to go into this darker orange neon, neon red color. And I'm going to start off by just giving it a little trace. I'm going to follow that little sharpie line there, that little black edge. I'm going to go all the way around. It can be kind of a thick outline, that's okay. I think it looks better with the thick outline. Gives a little bit more color so you can see it. And then I'm going to make those little rays shining out. So these are going to be with the thinner part of that brush instead of the flat brush. Turn it, use the thin part. Smooth out your bristles on the edge of your plate. It also takes off all the extra paint you may not need. Just leaves you what you do. And I'm going to make little, little rays coming out. You want to make yours longer 
or shorter. Definitely can. Going all the way around. I'm going to start over here by the foot and see how long I need to make those. Whatever you have space for. Now if you like it just like that, you can definitely leave them just on the outside. But I'm going to do kind of a second little row of those in the middle. I really like that. I think it makes it just a little different. You could even do another row of these. Let's try, see what that looks like. That's pretty cool. Let's just keep going. Kind of neat, kind of different. But it's up to you. Customize how you like. So once you have little patterns on your sun, um, I'm going to move over here to my eye, and I'm going to fill it in with black just so it has a lot of time to dry. Almost our very last step is going to be that little white touch inside the eye. But for now, I'll fill in the whole entire eye with just a little black paint. Don't worry about the little white dots yet. We'll put those in later, once that's nice and dry. And I'm also going to fill in my little feet. If you want to do that with Sharpie in the end, definitely can. And I think those are the only spots we actually have a little black paint. All the rest. It's a nice vibrant paint or Sharpie. So after you're done with the black, I'm going to give the little brush a really good scrub, maybe a couple scrubs, dry it off really, really well. And we'll come over here to our little leaves next. So um, I'm going to add this little pattern. I really like it. I think it looks like very round to give us a lot of shape. So I'm actually going to borrow a little of this dark green that I made. A little while ago so that green and blue combination if you don't have any left just mix up a little bit more mix up on that same little spot mostly green and then a little bit of blue at a time so on this one I'm going to trace it a little bit You can have some parts a little thicker, some parts a little thinner. And then we are going to add on that little pattern. So I'm going to use the same color, same brush, and I'm going to make kind of curved lines or like little happy faces almost. So this one's going to be the most circly, and then the rest are kind of just little curves following down until you run out of space. For this other leaf, I'm going to kind of do the opposite, so I'm going to borrow a little bit of this light green so that green mixed with white 
combination. And I'm going to use that to outline the edges. If you can't really see it too much, maybe a little bit more white mixed in. Yeah. We just want to be able to see that color against our dark green. Kind of like a little highlight. Don't have to put a ton of this color. Try it out on the edges, see what you think. Sweep it along. And then on this one, to give it just a little extra pop, I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry off my brush, and I'm actually gonna go into a little bit of blue and add on just a couple little darker colors every once in a while, kind of in the leaf next to that outline in the middle. I'm going to drag a little bit in the center. Just give a little extra something. A little shadow, a little contrast. Before I forget, I'm gonna put that little, that little eye, a little underneath eye paint. It's like a little eyelid. Um, I did that with a little bit of purple. Shwoop. Just makes it a little extra cute. So as far as paint goes, I think all we have left after that little under the eye is the little dots of white in the eye. I'm going to do that same little back handle of the brush trick. I still have my small brush. Back handle. I'm going to do a big dot, kind of not so much in the very, very center, but I go up a little higher, almost at the top, and then I'll put a little dot next to it. sparkle in that eye. So all the rest of our painting is just Sharpie designs. Um, so the only thing on Sharpies is that they won't write on top of wet paint. So if you have any parts that are a little wet, um, let's go blow dry real quick and then we'll bring it on back. So once you make sure it's nice and dry, I use mostly the, the black Sharpie, but um, the silver Sharpie shows up really cool on top of darker colors. So say if you wanted to do some little lines with the silver Sharpie, those turn up really cool on the darker parts, darker colors. Um, I'm going to use mostly my black sharpie. I'm going to go over all my lines on the edges first. You can make it a little thick. And if at any point you get um, a little bit of paint on your sharpie, it kind of stops working, um, just kind of pull off a little piece of your paper towel and kind of I'll just wipe it off until it starts working again. So I'm going to go over all my edges with Sharpie. Okay, so I have everything traced in um, black Sharpie, and I'm going to start adding on some little patterns and designs inside those um, shapes. So I'll start maybe over here. So um, my example over here, I did some zigzags. They can be 
as big or small as you want them to be. And take your time with this, there's no rush. And put some little dots in between. You can add stripes, kind of curved lines like feathers. And these are kind of my favorite ones. So those, they remind me kind of of scales, but they also look very feathered too. So those are just little U shapes. So we're going to make little loop-de-loop -loop U's. And then the trick on that one is, um, so I'm going to find my centers. So we can do that a little close. So I'm going to find the center, connect centers to the center. Center out, so here's my center. Center to center, center to center, and then out. Center to center, center to center. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the center, but that helps just kind of like uh, stagger them or offset them so they look a little bit more natural. Put like a little baby line if you need them. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add some of these over here too. You can also add lines. You can even do little polka dots if you wanted. You can do that with the black paint though too. You want to draw hearts, stars, any patterns you can think of. We also have that glitter glue. So if you want to put any little designs, maybe with your glue, maybe little dot details, might be cool. I'll bring that a little closer. So you can have it kind of like full 3D. You could put a little on Maybe the outside of the eye might be cool. A little extra sparkle. You can rub a little glitter into your sun. That might be a cool spot. Get a little shiny. Or anywhere else you want, maybe even a little light shiny on a loop. On a curve, on an edge, would be cool. On a beak, wherever you like. Just little hints, little shine. And then most importantly, we can take that Sharpie again, either one, and we can put our artist signature in that corner. Put a little date on it if you like. I'm so excited to see you again next week for our very next mystery surprise bag painting class. And it's going to be a really cool one. So I'm so excited for you to see it next week. So we'll see you then, guys. Bye.